For many brain attack survivors, seeing is not believing. They lose their ability to navigate through their visual world. They clearly see something, but it may not be where they think it is. Yet nothing's wrong with their eyes. On a December morning in 1997, Joyce Walder had a stroke. It didn't destroy her ability to speak or to move. Instead, something very strange happened. This was an obscenely painful experience, but what was going on besides the pain was that all of a sudden, all of a sudden, just like that, the whole world turned into a wall-to-wall -wall series of Picasso paintings. Parts of rooms in the wrong place, just looking at a human being, one eye up here and one eye down here, nothing was right. After her brain attack, just walking down a street became nearly impossible. I remember being out when I was about two months along, and I completely fell down. Stepping off a curb, I just spread out over the pavement. You have these people who have 20-20 vision, and yet they bump into things. They cannot read. They may not recognize their loved ones. They may not recognize people they know. Professor Lucia Vina leads a team of researchers who are trying to help people like Joyce Walder by probing the way brains process vision. She cannot do this task at all. She could not do it day one. This is Joyce's brain. The stroke damaged her occipital lobe, one of the most important parts of the brain for processing vision. After her stroke, Joyce could no longer join the pieces of something she saw into one whole image, nor could she judge the speed and direction of objects. So let me enter your name. Professor Vina is giving Joyce a series of tests. You're going to fixate on the right-hand side, and you let me know if you think you're walking to the left or to the right. These tests were originally developed for visual research, but the very same tests work perfectly for visual rehabilitation. OK, so this is the last test we do today. We are adjusting the test so that it's not terribly frustrating. And then we make it harder and harder so that the patient with loads of practice can really uh, get better. And eventually the brain would, you might say loosely, rewire itself. Day by day, Joyce's brain rewired itself until she was ready for the ultimate challenge, driving a car. I remember a couple of times I started to cry. I said, I can't do this. But by a week or two of doing that, uh, I got better. Wow, this is wonderful, all this 100% correct. With determination and lots of practice, Joyce Walder succeeded. Her rehab had helped her brain recruit other cells to do the job of the dead one. It shows that adult brain cells can change with experience and training. This discovery of uh, changes in the brain has made a big difference in the life of many patients, specifically in the life of uh, Ms. Walder, who has improved so beautifully with training. I'm absolutely flourishing. I don't think I've ever been better in my life. And it's this um, increased confidence. I'm even more confident now than I was.